My four-year-old niece and I share similar interests. We both draw pictures of princesses with crayons. She is reconstructing images from storybooks and toys and media, whereas I'm deconstructing them. I'm critiquing depictions of white women throughout art history. I'm considering the ways in which images of women elicit desire and how that desire covertly promotes white supremacist ideology. Little girls may see images of princesses rendered in crayon. Their tall conical hats pay tribute to their royal status. Their flowing golden hair is a testament to their blossoming womanhood. They are to be looked up to, admired for their femininity. However, this same desire for the feminine implicates grown men and centuries of art historical depictions of women. The languid reclining nude, the flirtatious frolicking muse, the damsel in distress, these are subservient figures upon which to project sexual desire. These feminine bodies provoke using visual vocabularies developed by men. They speak the language of seduction. So is the image projected towards the four-year-old girl or her 40-year-old father? The ways in which both viewers derive simultaneous but disparate pleasure is disturbing. Does this soft pink and rainbow image of mermaids and unicorns belong on a preschooler's lunchbox? Or instead, is it a vagina dentana teeming with femme fatales that should be tucked discreetly between the box spring and the mat mattress, pulled out for intimate adult viewing? Distracted by the incestuous notion of a daughter modeling herself upon her father's sexual fantasies, we're actually failing to notice the larger context. As we draw our attention outward, we'll notice a ring of white conical shapes that surround these dancing figures. And pull back further, we'll notice the, no the nose of a white shark. But the women are unfazed by this looming threat because they're the bait. They're sirens which draw us inward so that we too are consumed. In a white utopic dreamscape, populated solely by white figures, a white audience will often ignore the blatant whiteness of the image. Whether child or adult, if we're only seeing this beautiful maiden, we're failing to recognize her whiteness as her beauty. And if we don't notice her or our whiteness, then we're vulnerable to the threat of embodying such an ideal. Whiteness unrecognized is powerfully dangerous, just like the jaws of the great white.